not advertising, I'm not sponsored, I don't care if you buy any of this stuff or not, but I know when I was shopping for stuff, it was hard to find info. Um, so I'm gonna do a, a rundown. It's gonna be a long video. I'll put markers to the specific stuff um, so you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. I'm gonna cover all these different things. So with that, let's get started. Um, I have a couple of the racks. I have the front rack here which I like a lot, uh, way more than I thought I was going to. It is just the right size to hold a bag of groceries. I got one of these bungee cord things from my local bike shop. I think Rad might sell a more expensive version on their website. This thing works great. You can put all sorts of odd size stuff in there. I was able to go to uh, the UPS store this morning with a pretty good sized box in there. Um, this rack has been awesome. Um, one downside is if you buy the more expensive headlight, theoretically it doesn't attach there, although there have been some other people who say they've figured out a way to make it work, so I might try that. Um, the other downside is apparently this uh, laminated wood or bamboo piece, if you leave it out in the rain, will disintegrate, which is not surprising, but kind of a bummer. It would have to get pretty wet for it to get affected, but if it did, it's not exactly a complicated piece. You could just cut another one, maybe make it out of a plastic or even put an old cutting board in there or something depending on your aesthetic sense um so anyway if you're thinking about buying this front rack absolutely that's my favorite accessory i've bought for these bikes so far okay i bought that i also bought this gas tank thing uh which i cannot say as much nice stuff about um it's okay people who want their bike to look like a motorcycle i get it i bought one thinking it would be cool you know uh, I hate everything about it, let's be honest. So let's go about how it works. Um, it, it attaches, there's water bottle cage holders there and on the bottom, so it's just four bolts. But then to get the lid open, you got these three fiddly rubber things and it just sort of flops open. Uh, there's some drain holes in the bottom. And then they built this phone holder and a cup holder into it, um, which I thought was cool. I was like, oh, I'll have a place for my, my cup. My water bottle, my phone, they both suck and they eat up space on the inside. So um, so what's wrong with this thing? Well, it's not big enough to put like a bag of groceries in. You, can, you can't even get like a small backpack in there, even if it's mostly empty. So if you want to say, take your laptop to the coffee shop, you got to put your laptop in and your phone chart, your laptop charger in sort of separately and let them bang around in there. It will hold a bike lock, okay, barely. Um, these things are super fiddly. They're always coming off. This thing is sized to hold like a can of Coke, a 12 ounce can, which is not something you generally bring on a bike trip. Usually you want like a water bottle. Uh, my water bottles would fly out of there. I did try carrying a, a can of soda in there and you know, it just splashed everywhere. It's bumpy here in Boston. Um, the phone holder thing is okay. The phone actually holds better than I thought it would, but it's placed in such a way that if you're using your phone as a map, which I do, um, it's really hard to see it. And also there's a big rubber band in front of your screen, so it messes up your touchscreen capabilities. Um, and both of these things chew up space on the inside, so you can't put tall stuff in there very easily, um, like my big bike rack or bike lock over there. So the gas tank thing, unless you really want your bike to look like a motorcycle, I'd give it a pass. Uh, you know, maybe they'll come out with a second version that would be better that maybe you had a hinge on it or you could open it one side. Maybe it would lock so you could leave stuff in there. It wouldn't leave anything super valuable. It nice to leave something in there. Maybe they'll ditch this foolishness and just make it a smooth top. Um, who knows? Maybe they'll come up with something better. But for right now, save your money. Um, I hate it <laughs> and I'm gonna get rid of it. <laughs> um, all right, so the next thing was the controllers here. If you buy the original uh, Rad Runner over there. It comes with that dinky little controller thing there. As I think a hundred dollar upgrade, you can get to the same one that most of the other bikes have. So, since uh, some people just want, want to see what that looks like, um, it's a much better controller. It tells you how many miles you're going, how fast you're going, better battery control, more speeds. You can go. You can do this. Uh, the trick to get another four miles an hour out of it. Uh, all around better controller. Uh, one downside is. You know, it sits right here in the middle, so you can't put your accessories there. My speaker and phone thing there um, will not fit on this, but that's probably a small price to pay. So um, I won't go through it 
because there's plenty of videos on the internet about it, but if you've been thinking about making the upgrade from that one to this one, uh, it's another one I would say is definitely worthwhile. Um, okay, the next one I was going to go over was actually the Yep child seat, which I bought from a local bike shop. I do support your local bike shops, people. Um, buy everything on Amazon. You could also buy it directly from Rad. Um, and this is the Yep Maxi. And you can see there's that little square rectangle right there. And this thing clicks in there. It's a little challenging to do one-handed, but it is very easy. So this is built to click in like that. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way, but it's built like that to click in. Just drop it down, turn this knob, put this strap here around the seat post for an extra level of security, and it is solid. You do not feel like your child is going to fly off the back of your bike, which is a good thing, especially if you're going 25 miles an hour. My kid loves riding back there. He absolutely adores it. Um, he's three and a half. So if you were wondering if that thing is worth 250 bucks, I would say absolutely if you have a little one. Um, one caveat there is they make two of these with the same name that look identical, but one of them is 280 bucks. One of them is 250 bucks. Buy the cheaper one. The other one comes with a completely different mounting system. It won't fit this thing. Um, so if you buy the one off the, the Rad website, you'll get the right one automatically. If you're just out shopping elsewhere, um, make sure you get the right one. We made that mistake and had to take one back. So good thing to know there. Um, but yeah, I've been very, very impressed with this thing. It is, it's a little pricey, but you know, you can probably pass it on after a couple years to somebody else. Um, and you know, my kid's three and a half and I would say he's a tall one. He'll still probably be in there for another year at least, hopefully, year and a half. So I'll take that off. Um, and then this one, the Rad Plus, one of the selling points is it comes with this add-on seat, which just drops into these bolt holes right here. I'm not gonna put it on the bike. Um, but it's there. I'm not really going to be qualified to give a review for it because I haven't used it. But just, you can see it drops on there and then it comes with these plastic uh, wheel covers and these foot pegs. And so the idea is after my kid graduates out of the um, bike seat attachment, he'll just be able to sit on there on the back and hold on. Uh, hopefully it'll work out. That was the purpose we bought it for. Um, so it's, you know, it's a thing you can buy. Not everyone wants it. But it's it's there, not a real review since I haven't used it, um, but it is very easy. They make it really easy. And they've got all these bolt holes for all their different attachments. So it's just four of these bolts. And then if you buy the aftermarket one, it would also come with these things that you have to put on, but I can't imagine it would take too long. Um, okay, the next one is the fenders. This bike, the Plus, comes with the fenders. Um, They've been absolutely essential. Anytime it's rained in the last 24 hours, I will take the plus out. If it's been dry, I'll often just grab the green one. I did buy the aftermarket fenders. They were like 75 bucks. I thought it would be an easy thing to attach. The instructions are quite daunting. It involves pretty much disassembling the whole bike. Uh, it's gonna be a couple hours. So I'm just sort of waiting for a day where I have a couple of hours to mess around with it. I'm sure after you've done it once, it'll be easier the second time, but the first time seems a little slow, so. Um, you know, for what you get for 75 bucks, you get two pieces of plastic, two pieces of wire. Uh, not super impressive. Not exactly the highest quality things, but they're sized right, they'll fit, guaranteed to work. Um, and they are definitely essential. You know, for, for the new price of these Rad Runners, I think it's now up to 1300 and they're gonna raise the price again. They should just come with them like the other bike does, but they don't, so there you have it. Um, so should you buy them? Probably if you live anywhere where it rains a lot. If you're in South Florida or something, maybe you don't care. Um, okay. Next thing was the mirrors. So I got a mirror for each of these bikes. I think they were 35 bucks each. You know, you could probably do better elsewhere. I don't know if you need to buy them from Rad. Um, they were branded Rad, but the instructions that came with them make me think that they just took some other existing mirror and threw them on here. They're like, talking about the millimeter size of your handlebars. They don't say, you know, if you have the Rad Runner, do this. Um, so you can see 
just gonna show you in there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little inner gaskety thing. You use both of them. You can use none, half, or both. You use both if you're putting the mirror on the, uh, the rad. They're okay. Um, there's not really an obvious place to put them. It would be nice if I could get it outboard more so I could actually see the cars. So I end up, if I can see the lane behind me, I end up also looking at my shoulder. Um, but they seem pretty sturdy. You can uh, set the friction on these. I've set them like this so that I can move them out of the way if I want to, but they'll still stay generally where you want them, even on the bumpy roads around here. Um, this one is a little more outboard on this side than the other one, but it'd still be nice if you could get them a little farther on the handlebar. But so it is. It's better than nothing. I do find I use them, but I still find myself just turning around and looking in traffic a lot more than I thought I was going to, adding the mirrors. So, I don't know. Jury's out. Should you buy them? Maybe. Should you buy them from Rad? Probably not. You can probably find one for less than half the price on Amazon. Um, so, you know, they're, they're okay. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about, the Plus comes with this upgraded giant light. Um, which, having ridden around at night, you know, it gets dark here four these days. Uh, I actually do think is probably worth the money um, compared to the other one. One downside, of course, the big light theoretically doesn't work with this um, front basket. The front basket is my favorite thing about the bike, so we'll have to see how that goes. But if you don't care about the front basket or if you're willing to get a little crafty and find a way to make it work, um, the big light does give you a lot more light. Makes you more visible to others, makes it easier for you to see. Um, probably worth doing, but it's not 100% essential. The light that comes with the original RAV, this little small light, is actually quite bright. It's a whole lot brighter than anything I ever had when I was just riding a pedal bike. So, you know, it's, it's a, a nice upgrade if you think you're going to be riding around at night a lot, but it is not essential. I wouldn't put it top of your list. Um, the bungees. Oh yeah, I bought these three orange bungees. Why did I spend $15 on branded bungees? Um, because Rad makes these giant, um, huge steel tube rear, rear uh, racks, and it's actually none of the bungees I had lying around in the shop, would, the hook would not fit over them. So these are specific, they're big enough to fit over them, which is cool. But Rad sized them in such a way that they're all kind of flopping around. <laughs> So it's, it's a little hard to get them to just stay where you want them without keeping them real stretched out, which of course will um, make them lose, lose their bunginess over time. So you can see what I've done here. I've got them sort of jacked around the seat post. It looks a little dumb. So um, is they worth 15 bucks? Maybe. Do they look right? They match the orange? Sure. Uh, you know, it's, it's nice that I didn't have to say open up wide the the smaller hooks that I have on the much cheaper bungees you would get at any auto parts store. Um, but, you know, it's sort of a personal decision. I do like the wide strap to them, though. And, you know, once you get something underneath them, of course, their ability to flop around is taken away. Um, on my other video, several people asked me where I got this water bottle cage, because it's rad orange. Uh, it does match quite nicely. Um, I got that at REI. Uh, it should be on their website, or if you have an REI in your town, just go grab one. Um, just a standard REI water bottle that just happens to be the right color orange. And it's actually a really good water bottle cage. Unlike this thing, the water bottle cage, it actually holds a water bottle without letting it fly all over. Um, okay, getting away of, from the stuff you can buy on the RAD website and into other accessories, I want to talk about this seat post. This is... Uno Advanced Project. I replaced the seat post on both bikes because the original seat that comes with it, the saddle, is this piece of garbage, which Rad should just be ashamed of. And it is permanently affixed to the seat post. So you not only do you have to buy a new saddle, you have to buy a new post too. Um, just an atrocious decision by Rad. I don't know what they were thinking. Those saddles suck. The seat post attached to it permanently is comically bad so you know immediately you're in for almost a hundred bucks upgrade as soon as you get the bike if you're actually gonna ride this thing you know um which i do i've got some miles on each of these so um i bought two of these and i like them a lot they were actually very inexpensive on amazon i think they were like 35 bucks i'll throw a link in the description um it has a, s a suspension on there and you can adjust the travel on it and i've been very very pleased with them um there is there are two sizes. I believe it's the smaller diameter is the one you want, 29.7 millimeters or something like that. 
Um, and then I bought this Bontrager comfort saddle thing at REI. And then I bought this Medicus Wit Cup memory foam thing on Amazon. And having ridden them both, I started out liking the Bontrager a lot more. And now that I've maybe worn them in a little, I've actually decided I like this one better. Sort of a personal decision, but um, this one felt a little weird. It's got this sort of bump up here. Uh, it took me 50 miles or so, but after that, I started to really like it. So, um, you know, neither of these was particularly expensive. I think that one was 50 bucks and this one was about the same, maybe 40. Um, but it'd be nice if they just put something decent on there in the first place so you didn't have to spend 85 or 100 bucks starting out, but they don't. So if you're looking for a, an inexpensive upgrade, uh, I would recommend this Medicus Witkop thing, and I'll also put a, a link there in the description too. Um, what else do we got? Oh, the big light, it talked about the locks. So one of the things, if you spend more money on a fancier e-bike, many of them will come with a built-in wheel lock. Rad gives you no such niceties. Um, so I went out and I bought this Abus lock on Amazon. This is the biggest one they make. It is a really well-made lock. I'm quite happy with it. And since I'm driving an electric bike, I don't care that it weighs a hefty amount. Um, and it's been great. It will fit, generally, if I can get close enough to a post, I can put it through here and it will actually sort of block this. So it's a little harder to rip the battery off with a crowbar or something, not that it's impossible. Um, or I can get it through this area here. Um, and it's been, uh, it's been a good lock. I like the way it attaches here. Um, I've decided after trying it, I had it mounted over here for a while, I had it mounted down here. It's got this clever little locking mechanism, which I'll show you. Oops. The bike key and not the car key. So it was an expensive lock, but not outrageous. They say the lock should cost 10% of the bike, and that's about what it did. So, see this? As the lock itself slides into this carrier thing, and then you can lock it in place. And I have it set. I could tighten this up so it didn't move at all, but since I sometimes put the kid seat on the back and it needs to go where the lock is, I'll just raise it up like so, throw the kid seat on behind it. And sometimes it'll flop down like that, which is fine. It has never ridden down so far. It's like rubbing on the wheel or anything. And of course it's easy to tighten those bolts back up that hold that carrier on if it does. So I've been pretty happy with this lock. Um, you know, I wish Rad had given us a better place to store this kind of stuff. You know, if you wanted to put one of their rear baskets on, then this gets in the way. Um, on this bike, it's uh, been pretty much impossible to get a wheel lock through there because you've got these things on. Um, and then the fenders also make it a little more challenging to, to get stuff in there. But that's one of the things you get when you get a sort of mid-range bike. Uh, separately, I bought this uh, cable lock, which I just looped through the front wheel, um, tie it around itself, and then into the lock if I'm going to be out for a while. Just a little extra security since that front wheel is just on a quick release. Or if you're more concerned about the rear wheel, you could also do that. Um, then I found myself riding around. I had just bought one lock for the two bikes. Um, Eventually, I decided I needed a second one, and I found myself riding around one day without the lock by accident. I stopped by my local bike shop, and they did not have that big Avis lock that I wanted. They did have this $180 kryptonite lock. Since I did not want to ride home for an hour to get the other lock, and I needed a new lock anyway, I decided to spend the extra money, and I bought this thing, and it's this giant thing. It's okay. I actually, if you're going to buy one lock, I would probably buy the Avis. I never bring this thing out with me. The one good thing I can say about this gas tank is that this thing fits in there much more easily than that one does. So if you want the gas tank and you're looking for a lock, you can just toss this thing in there. The other good thing I'll say about this lock is that, you know, it's flexible. So if you have this gas tank thing on here, it makes it actually really hard to lock this bike up. You can't put it here, the other lock, because of this metal plate. You can't really get it behind in here because of this area is all taken up. Um, you can't get stuff down here, so you know that's you gotta lock it to the frame somewhere, right? So uh, this lock is gives you a lot more flexibility in how you can get your lock to stuff. Um, but you know it's heavy; it's, it's much heavier than the other lock, and it's kind of complicated. This, let's see, show you what I mean. This uh, 
bottom thing of the job comes off. this piece and then you've got this other piece then you've got this big piece so uh, you know three pieces it's a little more coordination takes a little longer to lock and unlock um, but it does give you some more flexibility so is it worth the extra 60 bucks over the abus which was already an expensive lock maybe sort of depends if you're gonna ride around with the gas tank I would say yeah probably since the abus and the gas tank are sort of incompatible um, if you're not gonna have the, the gas tank storagey thing, I would go with the cheaper Abus lock for myself. Um, I think they're both theoretically as hard to cut. Um, you know, a dedicated thief with a battery powered angle grinder will still steal your bike, but just slow them down a little. Um, and what else? I think that's it for most of the accessories. I did have these uh, two things I picked up on Amazon. I got this little speaker on for or whatever. It's okay. I'm not going to give it a review because I don't like it enough to tell you to buy it. Um, and then this, I'll throw a link on to. This is my cell phone holder. I actually really enjoy this thing. It's very solid. It does not drop my phone at all. It makes it right there. I can use the map easily. I can ask Siri to do stuff if I want to call somebody or somebody calls me. I can answer the phone. Um, it has not budged in 200 miles of riding over bumpy roads, and it was very easy to install with no tools. So I think it was 12 bucks or 15 bucks on Amazon, but I'd say that was a win. Um, and that is, for the most part, what I have to talk about. Uh, only other thing I would say is I don't even know if Rath sells an upgraded kickstand. The kickstand that comes with the Plus, this one, is much easier to use and um, better in that regards. This one is more like a motorcycle kickstand. Um, however, I find if you're going to have the kid on the rear carrier, I tend to sometimes use the green bike uh, because it's a lot more stable. Um, you can put the, you can, the bike won't fall over. There's no risk of me tipping my kid over while I'm getting him all strapped in. Uh, so I kind of like this one for that reason. But if you don't have a kid, well, this kickstand is much better uh, if you're not strapping stuff to the rear of your bike.